What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to yet another video. My name is Bria or basically Bria. I noticed that I talk with my hands a lot so like I apologize in advance if it gets crazy. Especially if I'm like digging deep into a story my hands will be going so please don't mind it if it bothers you. I'm sorry but my hands just help me flow so here we go. This story is very near and dear to my heart. It is a story that I knew that I wanted to tell. It's a story that I'm really blessed and grateful that I can look back on and share and just know that there was a happy ending at the end. It's It was traumatic to say the least. It was something I would have never imagined that I could go through, literally. But I'm grateful for this experience and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't trade the little blessing I got out of this experience for the world but it's something that I knew I want to share and I believe there are people out there who have probably experienced the same exact thing or may be going through this and I just thought why not share my story. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to title this video but I'm pretty sure it's along the lines of my crazy traumatic birth story um, because that's very much what it is in a nutshell. It's crazy, it's traumatic, all of that and it, I don't even know where to start. I just want to give a little background of how my pregnancy was leading up to labor and delivery. It wasn't the most fun pregnancy. I remember being in a lot of pain. I was always swelling up. Like, I typically swell up in general, like, pregnant or not, I will swell up if I'm sitting and doing my hair, if I'm sitting and doing my makeup, if I'm standing for a long period of time, if I'm on a plane, if I'm asleep. I swell up. I believe it has a lot to do with me just being dehydrated in general, but that's neither here nor there. During this pregnancy, I was swelling up to like unimaginable lengths. And it was just, it was so scary to me. And I'll probably insert a picture somewhere if I can find it. Cause I remember taking pictures of like my feet and stuff when they were swollen because I was just like, this is crazy. Like no one's feet should be this swollen. And it wasn't even always towards the end of the pregnancy. It was like during and the beginning. It was just real bizarre. So at the time I was working and I was working in retail. So I was working a very strenuous job. I had to, it was very hands-on. It actually was not that strenuous, but you had to move. Um, it was retail. So I did have a lot of downtime. I was able to sit down when I could, which was really good. I really thought I was gonna be able to stick out my entire pregnancy while working but i knew kind of like during my fifth sixth month that that just wouldn't be the case i remember going to work and when work was out i could barely walk and it was just like a real task and it was like a chore and work just stopped being fun i wasn't able to focus like i usually do i wasn't able to move around the only way to like get stock and stuff was to use the stairs so some of the times I had to rely on other people. I would get in when I could, but it was just a lot on my mental. It was a lot on my body. And I just knew something wasn't right all the time. I also would get really, really, really bad toothaches. If you know anything about pregnancy toothaches, you know that these things are literally hell. It, it's just the worst thing ever. It, they, they, ugh. Just thinking back on it, I would like be up until six in the morning, boohoo crying, ready to go to the ER, ready to call 911 because my tooth was hurting, my mouth was hurting. There, I don't really know the science behind it. It's some type of hormone stuff that goes on. With my son, I remember having like minimal toothaches. Like I would just have like just nights where I was uncomfortable here and there. With my daughter, it was like I knew when it was coming. There were certain foods I would stay away from just because I knew it would trigger a toothache. It was just really bad, and I would just remember going to sleep crying. I would go to sleep with heating pads on my face, with ice packs on my face. It was just real bad, and it was just bizarre. Like, why Why is my mouth on fire at all times? Then, along with the toothaches, came headaches. Me, I'm not a headache person. I don't get headaches that much um, or often at all, but I remember having a constant migraine for like a week straight. And it was so weird and just, it was so powerful. I think that's what scared me the most. 
it was so powerful. So I started being terrified that maybe I was coming down with preeclampsia. And I just didn't want that to be the case. I was just so scared. I always want to have like smooth pregnancies where I'm in good health, no complications. So just the thought of having preeclampsia was terrifying. I remember one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to get checked out. I just want to see what was going on. So I went to the hospital and they tested me for preeclampsia they tested my blood they tested my pee they just did what i believe was all the procedures that they take to diagnose you with preeclampsia or not and in this case after all the tests and labs came back they just determined that i was dehydrated and looking back on it i'm pretty sure i may or may not have had like mild preeclampsia just considering how this ended <laughs> something was not right so they just sent me home and said just drink a lot of water which I had nothing left to do but to drink water I, there was no way I could help myself eventually I would call in and be like look listen I'm still having headaches my pee is damn near invisible at this point because I'm drinking so much water it was just not taking these migraines away and as you know or may not know when you're pregnant you can't take medicine so I wasn't taking really much they say Tylenol Tylenol is not even that good and it doesn't even work all like that so I was low-key just suffering and I remember calling someone and I'm like is there something anyone can do they prescribed me like a nausea medicine that also targets like headaches I assume taking that medicine did kind of help and my headaches eventually came to a standstill and I felt better. I think some of the biggest things that I noticed during my pregnancy were how uncomfortable I always was, how hot I always was. I always was moody. I'm moody in general, but pregnancy me, just not a vibe. I was always crying. I was just always uncomfortable. There was always something wrong with me, to be honest. So that was just like, that's just a gist of how my pregnancy went. Um, and I lasted up until what I believe is like six months, six and a half months. I did have to leave work early. And I remember always saying, I believe this baby is going to come early. I just knew something, something was up. <laughs> I knew she was going to come early, not as early as she came, but I knew she was going to be an early baby. I knew she was just ready to get out. I had all the warning signs. So that brings us to the day before I went into labor. I went to a carnival, a state fair. I was at the state fair for quite some time. I believe we went around three or four and we stayed until it closed, so like 9.30. And I didn't feel off, like at all. I didn't feel off, but I do remember I did a lot of walking. And I remember just taking seats and like taking a breather and sitting down and drinking water any chance I got so I wasn't putting too much pressure on myself. And my feet did eventually start swelling up so and I was uncomfortable. So eventually I did feel a little bit of uncomfortability, but I wasn't like ready to go upset or anything. I was just a little uncomfortable. I was like really pregnant at this point. I was really big. So you can imagine it was summertime. I was just a little uncomfortable. So we leave and I go to bed, no issue this night. I remember waking up around like 4, 4.30 after going to sleep and I just had like a weird crampy feeling. Remember, this isn't my first rodeo, this is my second baby. So I know like the warning signs and when to be like concerned. At this point, I was not concerned. I just was wondering why I was feeling cramps. It was not contractions. There was no weird things going on with my stomach. I just was feeling really uncomfortable and really crampy. But once I like came to and fully woke up, I realized that I just was extremely uncomfortable. It felt like period cramps. My period cramps are really bad in general. And that's the feeling I was getting then. So much so that it was really hard for me to fall back asleep. I remember being extremely tired, but I just could not fall asleep because I was in pain. Although I was in pain, I wasn't like alarmed and I wasn't scared at this point. So I was eventually able to go back to sleep. I went back to sleep and I woke up around 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m. I woke up to the pain. Like, the pain was the reason I woke up. Which was crazy to me because I'm like, this is wild. What am I feeling right now? Again, I did acknowledge the fact that I went to a whole fair the day before and was out all day. So, I'm like, maybe I just kind of, like, overexerted myself and my body is just, like, not happy with me understandable but then I realized that the baby wasn't moving the first time when I woke up around like four or whatever I don't recollect if I felt her moving or not or I don't even think I had time to register it I think I just like forced myself to go back to sleep at that point and didn't think too much of it 
But as I was up around 7.30, I didn't feel her moving. And that's when I got a little bit concerned. But I also thought maybe she's asleep. Maybe she's <laughs> resting. Babies don't move 24-7. But this baby, it seemed as if she was moving 24-7. Like, I, there was never a moment where I was wondering what she was doing because she was literally always doing backflips in my stomach. So when I didn't feel her, I was a little bit alarmed because to this point, she would wake up as soon as I woke up. Like, if I woke up and, like, moved a little bit, I would feel a kick. I would feel something, a little warning sign that she was in there. She was ready to go. This morning was different. It was 7.30. I was feeling cramps. I was not contracting. I want to make that very clear. I did not feel contractions. I felt cramps. Like, it was just uncomfortable, like, pain. <laughs> That's how I can describe it. It was just uncomfortable pain. And I didn't feel the baby. So then I was like, okay don't freak out I was like I want to take all the measures that I usually take to get her to move or things that kind of trigger her to move so at this point I'm walking up and down stairs I'm drinking orange juice I'm trying to take a poop I'm peeing I'm walking around I'm poking my belly I'm doing whatever I can to get this baby to move and she's not moving so then I lay down I lay on one side I flip over I lay on my back I'm really a little bit, this is when I start to get really scared because I'm like, my baby's not moving and this is a very active baby. She never not moves. <laughs> At this point, I'm low-key panicking. I don't know what to do, but I also don't want to alarm anyone around me, which I probably should have because this is an instance where it's totally fine to alarm anyone that's around you. I just didn't want to make a scene and just nothing was the case, like everything was fine. So I waited a little bit. And then I remember rolling over and I tapped her dad and I was like, I'm feeling a little weird. Like, I don't really feel the baby. I'm feeling cramps. And he's like, okay, let's just kind of wait it out. And we'll just see how you feel in a little bit of time. And I thought that was okay. And our son was asleep at the time. So I didn't want to wake him up or scare him. Big point that I'm missing. We were not at our house. We were upstate upstate far away <laughs> from where my doctor is supposed to be like an hour and 15 minutes far away from where my doctor is so I'm kind of freaking out because I'm not close to my hospital I don't know much about this area so I wouldn't know what to do in case of emergency but there was a hospital that I was told to go to this hospital had a good reputation so I trusted it I called them and I told them what was happening and I was like hey this is how I'm feeling. I don't know what to do. I'm six months pregnant. And the lady's asking me questions. And I just remember as she's asking me questions, I just lose it. I just have a meltdown. I'm bawling. I can't even answer anything she's asking me. She's telling me like to poke my belly. And I just don't feel the baby. And I am terrified beyond belief. Like I just, this is a feeling I have never felt in my life. I was just, I just lost it. So we get up and we're like, we had to go to the hospital. So we go to the hospital and this hospital is like 15 minutes away. So it was not, it's not a far drive at all, but it felt like eternity. And I just remember, I just couldn't talk. I just remember just looking out the window the entire drive and I'm just like praying, praying that my baby's okay. Everything's fine. This is all a drill. <laughs> so we finally get there and I just remember we, I just remember being greeted by the most sweet, sweet people. Like, this hospital was God sent because they were just so sweet and inviting. And I just know that they were just ready to welcome me. And they knew how scared I was. And they did everything they can to calm me down. And they did. It worked. We get there, and I have these two beautiful nurses who were assigned to me. And the first thing they did was hook me up to the machines to monitor me and baby they were able to find her heartbeat it seemed to be normal and they just wanted to monitor me so as they monitor me they brought me this juice cocktail that was so bomb this cocktail was so bomb y'all like i can i make it to this day i make this cocktail to this day as i was drinking this cocktail i don't know if it was a spike in sugar i don't know what it was the baby's heart rate dipped like went from like 140 150 to 60 and at the same time, I kind of felt that cramp and everybody's signal went off. I just realized everybody was like, okay, we're on alert. They took the cup from me and they were like, okay, don't drink this anymore, obviously. 
and they were like something's going on we don't know what it is but something's obviously going on we need to figure out what is happening so then they go and they talk to the doctor on duty mind you this is a small family hospital so everybody knows everybody it's so intimate so small so old so the doctor comes in and he's a short guy i can't tell you where he's from because i don't no, but he just had this real thick accent and he's like um he he introduced himself to me he's amazing he has like a nike nike tech suit on <laughs> he's super old but he like had a great vibe and i just knew that i was being taken care of and i was in good hands and that was enough for me to kind of like calm back down at this point no one knows what's going on they eventually order an ultrasound they're like we're gonna order this we're gonna look at the baby see what's going on and go from there so they order it and I remember sitting there for like 30 minutes and the ultrasound tech is not really saying much. I just remember I kept asking like, we're like nervous at this point and we're like, is she moving? Is she, she's like, she's definitely moving. She's not really giving me much information, which terrified me even more. But I'm like, let me just let the lady do her job and try to keep my composure. After she completes whatever she was looking for, she explains to me that when a baby is in distress, they look for three signs to kind of assess the situation there's three movements that the baby will do to let them know if the baby is either in super distress or it's just like a little uncomfortable at this point in the span of time that they typically look for baby only did one out of the three things which alerted them that something was wrong she left she told a doctor doctor came in maybe five minutes later maybe not even that long and was like we have baby today and this is where my life just flip flops like oh my god at this very moment everything just became a blur because at you go in to just see what's going on with your baby and no with no thought or plans of walking out with a baby they walk in and say we have babies today and to put it into perspective my due date was september 15th this was july 31st so you can imagine how unprepared i was like extremely unprepared next thing you know my clothes are being stripped off of me i'm being shaved down there everything is just moving so fast and i don't have time to like gather myself automatically i look and i'm like call my mom <laughs> so he calls my mom and my mom is like i'm coming up she immediately drives up seven hours from back home i'm in i'm in new york my mom's driving from pittsburgh she's on her way i'm rolled out to get an emergency c-section i'm medicated they do the epidural they do everything they need to do and it was just so traumatic if i remember anything i remember how i was trembling like my whole body was like this i remember i was so i felt so cold that's what the feeling was. It was as if everything just started freezing. So everything just feels cold. I'm shivering, crying, praying. They're praying with me. It was just, it just looked like it was a scene from a movie. Like it, it was just, I was still in shock and disbelief. I did not know what was going on. So I go into surgery and they take out the baby. I hear her scream and cry and I just remember like a sigh of relief because at this point I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if she was going to make it. I didn't know. I just didn't know what was going on. They, they, to this day, I really just don't know what happened. They never gave me an explanation. They never really told me. I don't even think they know what happened. They just knew she was in distress. She needed to be out and they did what they needed to do. So they take her out, and I just remember him saying, "Wow, the baby's bigger than I thought." <laughs> so she was, a, she was a very small, petite, four pound, but she was mighty, and I just remember being so happy because my baby was so strong. I just did not know what was going on with her, but she was just so strong, and she had some lungs on her. But I was so grateful just to hear that. Upon them taking her out, they obviously had to stitch me back up, and then they came to explain that I would not be able to like hold her I wouldn't be able to be with her for a while and I remember always saying like I don't see how people have babies and then can't be with them because they have to go to the NICU and here I am getting that message relayed to me and I just was like what like they're like the team is already here to get her ready once they get her hooked up and ready for her flights yeah flight 
we will be back in your room to show you her so I got stitched up and wheeled into my room and I just had to sit there and wait to see my baby <laughs> and when they finally wheeled her in she was in this box I'll probably insert pictures throughout this video just to give you guys like a, a real picture of what was going on at the time so they wheeled her in and she's in like this plastic box and she's hooked up to all this stuff and they're like we're going to send her to um the NICU um fly her to the NICU they had to fly her that was like 20 minutes away so I was like this is real like this is really happening this is crazy so I'm in the hospital and basically I had to recover from an emergency c-section I had to heal from the trauma that had just ensued in my life and I don't have my baby at the same time terrifying 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 I didn't know how I was going to do it. It was very hard. It was very hard. It was a big test of strength. A big test of just like, can I do this? And I did it. <laughs> I did it. She ended up being in the NICU for a month. I got to visit her when I could, which was what I tried to be every day. Maybe like I took one day off sometime. I wanted to make sure that I saw my baby as often as possible. It was so hard. Eventually having to come home from the hospital, I'm full of milk, so I'm having to pump, and I, it's just, you're, you're being a mom, but you don't have your baby there, and it's just like so bizarre and so surreal, but I did it some way, somehow, <laughs> and yeah, I did that for a full month. I recovered from my C-section, which is a feeling in itself. It was crazy. The hospital was amazing. The NICU was amazing. When she was there, she was on a feeding tube. And then she needed a little bit of oxygen. But eventually, she got off the oxygen. And all she needed was just, like, plump up and learn how to eat. And that was that. And here we are. She's one and a half years old. And she's amazing. And she's healthy. And I'll insert some pictures of her as well. And... I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful for this experience. I'm grateful for my strength. I'm grateful for my family, my loved ones. The support I had has so much support around me. If you're out there and you're experiencing this, you are an amazing mom and you got this and you have my support. If you have any questions, please drop it down below. My camera's going to die, so I have to kind of cut this short. But I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces.